Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at SteamOS 3, otherwise known as Steam Deck OS, on the all-new Aya Neo Air Pro. Recently, I posted a first look video of the Pro, and we've also been able to take a look at the regular Air with the Ryzen 5 5560U, but when it comes to the Pro model, it's definitely offering more power and a bigger battery, and I really wanted to see how Linux ran on this unit. I'm actually running Hollow ISO, and if you're not familiar with this, I'll leave a link to the GitHub page in the description, but basically it's the same operating system that's running on the Steam Deck, and this is actually running from an external USB 3.0 drive because I didn't want to wipe the internal drive just yet because I still got some testing I want to do with Windows, but I gotta say, this thing is actually performing really well with SteamOS 3. And with all of the latest updates to Hollow ISO, everything here is working. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, we've got audio out, the built-in controls are working. Basically, the only thing I can't control on this unit right now is the RGB around the analog sticks, but once Aya Neo OS is released, which is going to be based on Linux, we'll have full control and Linux support on these devices. So if you're not familiar with the Air Pro, basically what we have here is a Ryzen 7 5825U. It's based on Zen 3. We've got 8 cores, 16 threads, and built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics up to 2000 megahertz. They are offering this in a couple different storage and RAM variants. You can pick it up with 16 gigs or 32 gigabytes of LPDDR4X running at 4266 megahertz. 512, 1 terabyte, or a 2 terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. We've got a beautiful 5.5 inch OLED 1080p display and a 38 watt hour battery. And from within Windows, using IA Space, we can go up on the TDP to 18 watts. That's kind of their max suggested for this unit here. And luckily, we do have tools here for Hollow ISO or Steam Deck OS that will allow us to adjust the TDP on these APUs. So in order to do this, I installed Crankshaft, which actually allows us to install plugins through Hollow ISO. And I'm using the handheld power tool suite. We can head over here to our settings overlay. And we've got a new section. From here, we can disable multi-threading. We can disable boost or leave it on if you want to. And we can adjust the TDP on this APU. So I will be messing around with this during the video per game. And with a lot of the easier to run 2D indie games and even a lot of the games from Valve, we can turn off multi-threading, CPU boost, and take this down. I mean, with the 2D stuff, you can go down to 5 watts. That way you get really good battery life. With something like Half-Life 2, multi-threading off, boost off, you can definitely run that at 1080p high on this chip. I've got a bunch of games to test out. We're going to go with some low-end stuff to see how low we can take that TDP. We'll also go with some newer AAA games. But first up, let's jump right into it with Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And here it is. So as you can see, the built-in controls are working here. The only thing I don't have is that Xbox button or that Steam button to bring up the overlay, so I do have to use a separate controller plugged in. And like I mentioned, I am running all of this from an external USB 3.0 hard drive. I didn't want to have to erase the M.2 that's in here just yet, but I might down the road because we're seeing some great performance out of this thing. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite 720p, which still looks absolutely amazing on this OLED display. Low medium mix, set at 15 watts on the TDP. We're running at 60, this game is fully playable all the way through. Moving over to some lighter 2D games, we've got Shredder's Revenge, 5 watts on the TDP, multi-threading off, boost off, this'll run at full speed. I mean, it doesn't take much to run this. And if you check out the overlay, I know it's a bit hard to see, we're not even pulling 3 watts from the CPU side of things with this game here, so you can get some really great battery life out of these 2D indie games. Next up, we've got Cuphead, and this does require a little more power than Shredder's Revenge did, but we're not at 5 watts from the CPU, and on the TDP, 5 watts, multi-threading off, boost off, looking really good. I also tested Dead Cells, and that one is pulling about the same as Cuphead does here. Checking out Left 4 Dead, 10 watts, multi-threading off, boost is off, and remember we've got a 1080p display here, so we've got this set to 1080p, high settings, not a problem to run this game, and going into it I knew we wouldn't have much of an issue. 
it's definitely an older game, still super fun to play. And these Source games do perform really well on these APUs. So something like Half-Life Portal, Half-Life 2, Portal 2, and the original Left 4 Dead, you're going to be able to run at full speed, no issues. But when it comes to newer AAA games, we will have to turn that wattage up. So here's Doom Eternal at 720p low, 16 watts, and I do have system-wide FSR turned on here. This netted me an average of 65 FPS, very playable. Unfortunately, my sound cut out, and I think uh, the game itself is actually looking for headphones. I might have that setting turned on, so just add a little bit of music over it. But yeah, I'm actually really impressed by how well this game is running on this APU. Remember, we're working with Radeon Vega graphics here. We don't have RDNA 2 in the iNeo Air Pro and it's putting out some decent performance. I always like to test this game because it's still a game I personally play on a regular basis. Project Cars 2, don't ask me why, I just do like this better than the third one. And with these settings, I got an average of 95 FPS out of this game. Turning V-Sync on is definitely the way to go with these handhelds. It will limit the power on that CPU. We won't need to pull as much, but I always like to see this game running unlocked, and this thing is definitely trucking along. Alright, so moving over to something a little heavier duty, we've got Cyberpunk 2077. 720p, low, 16 watts, FSR from within the game, set to performance, not bad at all. I mean, I actually wasn't expecting to get over 40 with it. We're so close to right there on the edge of keeping a steady 60 with this game. And there's still one major performance bump that we can get out of this, but I personally just don't like it. It's FSR Ultra Performance. It just makes everything look super duper pixelated, but with that turned on, there's a chance we could lock V-Sync on and run this at 60. And the final one I wanted to test here was the new Spider-Man Remastered. 720p low, and I took this up to 18 watts, and to tell you the truth, from 16 to 18 I didn't notice much of a difference, I was kinda hoping for it. But, you know, with this one, we can't quite run it at 60 FPS. It's still definitely trying its hardest, and I did try system-wide FSR. It really didn't seem to do much when I lowered the resolution down. So from the settings itself, I've got FSR set to performance. And just like Cyberpunk, we could go to Ultra Performance, but again, it just takes that resolution way down, and I just don't like the way it looks. And before I wrap this video up, I did want to show off desktop mode because I know I'd have a few people asking about it. It is built in the Hollow ISO, works great here. You can do video out of USB Type-C or if you have an adapter plugged in, you can go HDMI to a larger display. It's really up to you. You can access the Discover Software Center here so you can download all of your favorite emulators. We can do some web browsing and some video playback. And with this little OLED display, video playback looks really good. I've just found a little LG demo video. We're at 1080p, 60, and the colors really pop on this OLED display. I personally really love the way it looks. And of course, this 5825U can do 4K video playback quite well, so if you did want to go HDMI to a larger 4K display, you could always run your desktop like that. So yeah, this actually performed way better than I thought it would with Steam Deck OS, and of course, running this at a higher wattage is definitely going to help out. It's not a custom SoC, this is an off-the-shelf Ryzen 7 5825U with 8 cores and 16 threads, and on the CPU side of things, yes, it'll beat the Steam Deck out all day long, but when it comes to the GPU, we still have Vega here instead of RDNA 2. But in the end, with SteamOS 3 or Steam Deck OS or Hollow ISO, whatever you want to call it, this is performing pretty decently for a Vega GPU. If you're interested in checking out the Windows performance of the Aya Neo Air Pro, I will leave a link to the first video I created. It's kind of a first look video. Got a lot of games tested there, went over all the specs, all the features, and we also tested out some high-end emulation. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Aya Neo Air Pro, let me know in the comments below. I don't mind making a couple more videos on this. It could be more games, more emulators, a different operating system. Just let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in video videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and maybe think about turning notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.